So one thing I would say is that I've assessed hundreds of criminal cases and the vast majority of the time they have lots of environmental factors and they are things like poverty, uh, drug abuse, domestic violence, being the victims of uh, physical or sexual abuse, the perpetrators that is when they're younger, uh, poverty, did I say that, drugs and alcohol, these are very common. The vast majority of patients that I see have these factors. In fact, it's so common that when I see patients that don't have those factors, they really stand out in my memory. One absolutely major one has to be a case that I've spoken about very recently in a video, the most shocking case of any of my patients, a young 18 year old girl who's got this unblemished past. She has never been antisocial, no drugs, no family history of criminality, never got into trouble. Uh, out of the blue, she became psychotic and tragically she um, smothered and killed her two-year-old nephew who she was babysitting at the time. The reason I bring up this case is because even though she had no environmental factors, it's very clear that her mental illness directly led to her offending. Another case that really stands out was very early on in my career. I met this young man in a medium secure unit. He was in his early 20s and he was also unusual in that he came from a very privileged background. So for example, he was privately educated. For those people outside the UK, about 7% of our kids go to these private schools, very expensive, the highest level of education. He was one of those people. He uh, was very intelligent at school, but despite that, and also his siblings were very successful. He had uh, one sister who was a barrister and a brother who was a dentist. They were older than him. But this kid, he just constantly got into trouble, was delinquent since he was a kid from getting into fights at school, got into drugs. Uh, he was actually there for the alleged murder of his best friend who he uh, stabbed after he became um, really high on drugs. They were arguing about this drug exchange. They used to throw raves, so it was all related to that. So the point, uh, the reason I'm bringing him up is he is another exceptional case where there wasn't any environmental factors or clear genetic factors that I could see, it just seemed to be random. So nature versus nurture, which one is it? To really briefly summarize the research that we know, there was a meta-analysis of 24 different studies and they concluded that the variance of violence is about 50% genetic, 50% environmental. So <clears throat> what is a meta-analysis? People much, people much cleverer than me, they combine all these studies and mix the results together, which is much more complicated than it sounds because the ways that you measure violence can be different. So some people might have like a self-filled questionnaire, some other um, pieces of research might look at their criminal record and they those both those methods have potential inaccuracies for different reasons. Uh, also the populations they study might be different. So some studies might look at the prison population, some might look at males only for example. So to combine all these studies is actually pretty complicated, involves a lot of statistics, blah blah blah. And on top of that there have been twin studies as well. So as you might know if you have monozygotic twins they're 100% genetically identical. So in cases where they're sent for adoption or they grew up in different environments, which is rare but it does happen, you can measure things like violence so you know how much is um, afforded to genetic factors. You can also do dizygotic twin studies where they're non-identical twins and have 50% of the same genetic makeup. Basically those studies have revealed pretty much the same thing so everybody agrees that it's about 50% genetics, 50% environment so it's both nature and nurture. I don't think what I'm telling you is groundbreaking, I think most people know this anyway. Hello cruel world, what you just saw there was a tiny little tantalising taste, mm, mm, kind of nutty, of a much longer episode. You should go check it out if you're interested, the link will be in the description below. If you're a fan of either true crime or mental illness, <clears throat> or the crossover between the two, then you've got to go and check out my main YouTube channel, A Psych for Sore Minds. My name is Dr Shaham Das, I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist. I assess mentally disordered offenders for a living so that you don't have to. My channel covers a whole range, a smorgasbord of topics related to true crime and mental illness. For example, high profile true crime cases with my own kind of personal psychoanalysis of individuals. I discuss issues related to criminality. I discuss individual diagnoses. I give advice about psychiatric problems. I interview ex-patients. I do a lot. There is something for everybody on my channel and I implore you to go and check it out. You can even steal some of my ideas, 
palm them off as your own to impress your friends and impress people at dinner parties. It's all good. I've got your back. Until next time, stay euthymic. Check out my channel and please do not forget, I love you.